Are you serious? Are you serious? Folks, the second blood moon is going to rise this Wednesday, October the 8th. But what has happened since the first blood moon? Of course, there's a four blood moon tetrad that lands on four high Jewish feast days. The first one was April 15th, Passover. Since that one till now, what has happened? Well, unbelievable things have happened. And unbelievable. But I want to focus. The Lord, I've been praying and asking God and researching and re-looking back. And God said to me, there's five major events, very biblically significant events, have happened since the first blood moon. And let me tell you what the first one is. The first one that happened was Chrislam, the establishment or the beginning process of the establishment of a one world religion. Pope Francis arrived. He proclaimed he was going to Jerusalem, but instead he went to Jordan and then Bethlehem and met with the Palestinian Authority, Ma'ud Abbas. While in Jordan, he met with King Abdullah II. He then went to Jerusalem. He backdoored his way into Jerusalem instead of coming in the front door. You normally, when you're a head of state and you enter into a country, you go into the right into the, and be greeted by the prime minister or the president of that country. You don't go in the back door into Bethlehem and then show up in Jerusalem and say, okay, now I'm ready to meet with you. That was a very significant slap in the face to the prime minister of Israel and to the nation of Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu. Second thing he did was, off the cuff, while in Bethlehem holding a mass, he called for a unification prayer. He asked imams, he asked Ma'ud, Abba, uh, uh, Ma'ud Habas if he would come. He asked the president at that time of Israel, Shimon Perez, if he would come to the Vatican for a peace talks. They agreed. He still hasn't met with Netanyahu. Then he establishes, after he leaves Israel, a prayer meeting that involved imams, rabbis, and Catholic cardinals, and Protestant ministers. He also sent a video out to Kenneth Copeland, uh, reaching out to the Pentecostals and to those of the uh, more of the mega churches, if you will, and to those that are involved in the Protestant movement. So uh, all of this, and they visited him. Many prominent televangelists visited him. He had his prayer meeting in which imams, <laughs> rabbis, and Catholic cardinals and Protestant uh, bishops all prayed together at the Vatican and they read from the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Quran. What? Are you serious? This was all a part of the formation and the beginning processes of Chrislam. Don't forget Tony Blair. His Blair, Tony Blair Faith Foundation is trying to eliminate all radical religions not radical Islam, radical religions, and he throws Christianity in there. Watch, keep an eye on Tony. Number two, since the first blood moon, Russia invaded Crimea and eastern Ukraine. Putin, the, Putin on the move, the bear on the move, which was prophesied to happen in the, in the Bible, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. Putin actually is trying to reestablish the uh, the Magog territory, which will eventually be the site of the final battle, and the, and the countries involved in it, but the old Russian Magog territory, if you will, included Crimea and eastern Ukraine, as well as those three smaller Baltic states that have yet to come in line. So watch him continue to work on the formation of that. Also, there's five empires in the book of Ezekiel that will be on the side of Magog. Four of them are already there. Russia, Persia, which is Iran, uh, Ethiopia, which includes the Sudan, and Libya, which has now been turned into a radical Islamic state. Those four have already been over here. Turkey was over here with NATO, but Turkey has now joined and has made all kinds of anti-Semitism type comments toward Israel, including Israel, you will swim in your own blood due to the war that took place with Israel and Hamas. So number two, 
is the establishment of Magog territory being reestablished in the process. Number three, since the first blood moon, Israel had a seven-week war. And actually, folks, with Hamas in Gaza, after three Hebrew boys were abducted and brutally murdered, it kicked off and ended up being a seven-week war with Hamas in Gaza. Now, how significant is that? Every time we've had a four-blood moon tetra since the crucifixion of Christ is only the eighth time on high Jewish feast days. There's other four-moon tetras, but they're not on Jewish feast days. Just the ones on Jewish feast days, Israel has either been at war or the children of Israel have been persecuted and slaughtered. Great persecution on them every time there's been a four-blood moon tetra. It holds after the first blood moon. Seven-week war. Number four, ISIS, the rise of ISIS, the rise of radical Islam, and the process of taking back ancient Babylon, the territory of the empire, the ancient Babylon, ISIS is in the process of taking, and they're doing it by declaring a, a Muslim caliphate, and their leader, al-Baghdadi, says he's the caliph, and in the meantime, while they're establishing it, taking over the land of Chaldeans and following uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 41 through 46 to a T, they've also started a genocide on Christians, murdering them, executing them, beheadings, crucifixions, raping, outright brutal torture of Christians in the process. The infidels are going after, according to the Quran, and they are trying to reestablish ancient Babylon territory, just like Russia is trying to reestablish ancient Magog territory. This is a, another major biblical prophecy milestone in process, in process. Chrislam in process. Russia and the new Magog in process. Uh, ISIS and the ancient re, uh, Babylonian Empire reestablished in process. And, of course, Israel had their seven-week war. But finally, number five, since the first blood moon, the emergence of the plague of Ebola, what could be the first of the seven last plagues in the Bible found in Revelation 15, verse 1. Certainly, uh, pestilence, diseases, plagues that Jesus talked about as the signs of the end times in Matthew 24. There's no question about that. Ebola has claimed the lives of 3,414 people as we speak during this first blood moon cycle. It actually started in December of the year of last year, but we nobody really seen heard about it until after the first blood moon. Now it is spreading. West Africa is being is being saturated with this disease, and now it has made its way all the way to America. The same day that Ebola's first patient was discovered. On the 26th of September in Dallas is the same day that the woman was beheaded by ISIS, radical Islamic Muslim, in Oklahoma. So the beheadings and the Ebola came to America the same day. Five major events have happened since the first blood moon. What will happen after blood moon number two? Certainly, we're living in the last days. Biblical prophecy being played out right before your very eyes. And yet there are those that doubt, who don't believe, scoffers and mockers. And let me say this. Every time people say that there'll be scoffers, and they say, well, that's just the atheists who don't want to hear anything about it. No, that's not, that's not who's the scoffers. The scoffers are in the church. The scoffers are in the pulpit. Scoffing at the end time signs and Bible prophecy and telling their congregations they have nothing to worry about. As Chrislam rises, folks, as the one world religion rises, scoffing and mocking will become a norm in pulpits across the world. And guys like me will be the butt of a lot of jokes. But I'm here to tell you now, Jesus is coming back. And they mocked Noah, but they didn't mock him when the rain fell and he was in the ark. Are you in the ark? The ark of safety? Give your life to Jesus Christ. Things are getting very, very intense. He's coming back soon. Give your life to Jesus, please. God bless.